Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to finish off looking at the chart node. In the previous video on the chart node we looked at how to display real-time data. In this video we're going to look at how to display stored data. So this is data you might have stored in a, in a log file or in a database and you want to display that onto a chart or, or a graph. And we're going to look at three charts here. We're going to have a look at a straight line chart. We're going to have a look at uh, uh, bar charts. There's two examples here. Of, of bar charts and these are the flows we're going to use and they're quite basic and I've taken these flows um, from this article which is if you look on the chart node and you look at the the help screen you've got this information here and that takes you onto this page here and if you look at it it tells you how to display stored data and the first one it does is a line chart and this is the example they give you. So what you have to do, the trick for all this is actually getting your data from your from your database and you've got to put it into an array. So the data has to be placed into into an array. Now this is the data they give us for the um, line chart and you can see here it's an array of data but it's actually an array that contains an object and there's three values that are object, there's series, there's data and there's labels and the series contains also an array and the data contains an array and this is array uh, multiple arrays of objects so you can see here there's one array there's two arrays and there's a third array and inside those arrays there's an object now this is a graph it produces you can see here we've got three values that we're actually plotting we're plotting um, a, uh, a b and c and you can see them here there's c at the top and there's b this one here and there's a here. Now they're graphs against time, so they're, they're time time based graphs and these are the values here. So it's a value against time just like we saw in the real time data. Now in reality they wouldn't be labeled A, B and C but I've less, left those labels as they as they were. They'd be something like uh, temperature, humidity and, and wind speed or whatever you, whatever you were plotting. So let's go back and look at the data again. This is the data here and you can see here we've got an x value which is time so this is a timestamp and we've got a v y value which is 5 and so we've got three values going here and if we go back to the graph this is for the a value here so we've got 5, 4 and 2 and a is the dark blue so we start off 5, 4 and goes down to 2 and if we sorry I'm wrong one. If we go look at the B value we go 6, 7 and 6 and there's the B value here so we go 6, 7 and 6 and the same with the, the C value it's just a straight uh, line across the top all values 7, 7, 7. So you can see here we put all the values for for A into an array and each one each value is actually a object so an object consisting of the timestamp and the value itself so we've got three values timestamp value timestamp value timestamp value and because we've plotted more than one item on this graph then we have three separate arrays the first array second array and the third array down here now all I've done is I've put this into a function node I've just copied it from there put it into a function node set the payload equal to the array and I just returned the payload and that's all I've done to it and I've actually added uh, uh, some labels to it uh, called room 1, room 2 and room 3 and they for some reason they don't show up on the graph so I'm not really going to particularly worry about that but they don't show on the graph okay so that was the the line chart so let's go and have a look at the bar chart now this bar chart here is very similar to the the line chart in the fact that we've actually got three values we're plotting like a b and c now i've actually changed them here and i've called them temperature one temperature two and temperature three so we're plotting these temperatures over three months so we've got january february and march and we're going to have each one of them appear in that month there so january's values appear here february's here and march values appear here now if I just scroll down to this page here this is the actual data we're putting into it here again we've got the array it's a series data and labels and this time the label is showing we've got January, February, March and we've got the series 
which is x y and z and I've just changed these to temperature 1 temperature 2 and temperature 3 and then we got the data which is stored in an array so it's an array of arrays this time here so let's take a close look at the data before we look at the graph now the x values here are these three values here so it's the value 5 in January, 6 in February and 9 in March so x remember corresponds to temperature 1 on my graph and again here this is y or temperature 2 and so it had a value of 3 in January, 8 in February and 5 in March and the z values or temperature 3 are 6, 7 and 2 so it's 6 in January, Feb 7 in February and 2 in March and you can see that when you look at the graph here you can see the values here so we've got temperature 1 was 5 in January a 6 in uh, February and 9 in March and go back into the thing you can see 5, 6 and 9 there so let's take a quick look at the flow and you can see here all I've done is take that data that you saw on the screen and I've just put it into the payload and I've returned the payload and for the chart object, sorry, chart node, I've just changed it so it's uh, displaying a bar chart and I've set a minimum and a maximum. So that was chart chart 2. Let's move on to the final one which is chart 3. Now here they actually give two examples here and this one here is for actually a single month with three different values. So in my case I'm going to be temperature 1, temperature 2, temperature 3 in the month of January you can see here's the value for temperature 1, temperature 2 and temperature 3 you can see here it's an array of arrays so three arrays and the second option here is we're going to have a single value which is say temperature 1 and we're going to do it over three months so we have a single array there and three values in that array so it's a different slightly different format and there is a note here about using the first color for all bars and I'll show you that in a second that you can have them all display in the same in the same color because we've, we're only dealing with one value here which is effectively temperature one now I'm not going to do this one I'm just going to do this one here so this is what it looks like you can see here I've got temperature one temperature two and temperature three and these are the values here and they're all in January so a single month and so this is the one I'm doing here we're just doing January and three values representing temperature 1, temperature 2 and temperature 3 or X, Y and Z in there and again to display this uh, all I do is put it into a into the message payload I've just copied that from the screen and just changed the X, Y and Z and return the message and again I'm just displaying that as a bar chart and here is an option I mentioned earlier use the first color for all bars you can tick this box here if that's what you need to do okay that brings us to the end of the video if you like the video then click on the like button below if you've got any comments on the video then use the comment form below and if you want to be notified of new uh, videos on the channel then you can always subscribe and click on the notification bell. Okay, until next time, goodbye.